Good morning. It's early. It's six forty-five, I guess. Um, welcome to the middle of December. Um, Andrew just left for work, and I always wake up early, even on my days off. I go to work. I wake up for work at like four a.m. on my work days. So six o'clock in the morning feels like sleeping in. So it was time to have some coffee and sit in my little plant room, which is my routine when I'm not working, when I'm waking up so early to go to work. I just make coffee and get in the car and drive, but I usually start my days off with coffee in the plant room. And I'm seeing some yellow leaves. Um, it's been, when did I move everything in here? I moved all my plants in here from the front porch just before my birthday in September. So I guess they've been in here for like, three months now? How is that a thing? Um, but I think for the most part, all the plants have acclimated well. Um, not a lot of issues. A lot of them are actually growing better now. If you have the right setup for your plants, they're not gonna like go to sleep in the winter. Um, I remember last winter, my plants grew so much just being under these grow lights. Um, so I have a couple of yellow leaves, but nothing that I'm concerned about. Um, everything looks pretty good except for one plant that I'll show you guys. Hey, do you have to lick yourself right under the table? But anyway, I'm gonna have some coffee, um, do some little small plant chores. Um, you wanna see what I'm working on? It's right in front of me. I'm making a granny square blanket. I'm actually making two blankets right now. I have crocheted on and off for like years, whenever I feel like it. My mom taught me when I was a kid. Um, and so I won't, I'm making a, not this project, but I'm making a baby blanket for Andrew's brother and his wife who had a baby. She's a year old now, but I haven't met her yet. I'm going to meet her next week when we go to Michigan for Christmas. So I'm making her a little baby blanket. Maybe I'll show you. But of course, then YouTube wants to recommend all of the crocheting videos in the universe. And I saw all these videos for granny squares. And so I was like, I want to try that. And they're so easy because each one takes like 15, 20 minutes to make. And so I got a bunch of different colored yarn. And I have like, well, let's see. I have like 40 of them done, maybe. So I'm going to have a blanket that's like 10 of these across by 20 down, I think, which is going to be 200 squares. And sounds like a lot, but in just like a week, I've made like 40 of these. So it looks kind of funny. It looks like I just have a pile of coasters. I know you guys might think this is ugly, and I am not sure what the finished product is going to look like. Maybe ugly. But I really, when I saw these like patterns like this, it really gives me like an Austin vibe. I don't know how to describe that for anyone who's not been to Austin. It's very like, well, we used to call it crunchy granola. Everybody's like organic and they buy local and they have compost bins and they wear like the girls wear like flowing dresses with cowboy boots. Like there's definitely a vibe to Austin. And as soon as I saw these granny square patterns, I thought of my friend, Sarah, who, I mean it in the best way. She like embodied that like Texas cool kind of look that I never established, but I lived around. And I thought this blanket reminds me of Sarah. So I'm gonna do it. I'm not giving it to Sarah. <laughs> it just reminded me of her. But um, it might be a little funky looking, but I think it'll be cool. But I need to stop doing these granny squares because I only have like a week left before Christmas-ish, before we go to Michigan for Christmas. And I have to finish the other baby blanket. You know I'm gonna show you? I like it too, but now that I'm doing these, I think these are more fun, but I'll show you the other one. Okay, so this is the other one. And I sort of paused on it because I ran out of yarn and had to order more on online that did not ship very quickly. So that's when I started doing the granny squares, but now I have the rest of the yarn that I need. I don't know how this lighting is, but it's kind of like a grayish pink kind of color. And 
I like the pattern. It's a little bit less loud <laughs> than these, a little more traditional. But I'm, I don't remember, I'm like halfway done with it, I think. I don't know. If you know anything about crochet, I tend to crochet a little tight. And this is about two inches shorter than I wanted it to be. It's turning out really well. Um, but I wanted it to be like a little bit longer. Maybe after I wash it, I can stretch it a little bit, but uh, good enough, right? So I have to, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep going until I think it's the right size. This is an easy pattern. The granny squares are also easy, but anyway. I have a lot of like hobbies. My ex used to make fun of me for that. He said I had too many, or that I always, always like finding a new one. And that's true, but um, sometimes I find people who have like no hobbies or interests, and I think that's weird. I've always had lots of hobbies. One time I wanted to learn how to play the cello because I heard that, what's the most like famous uh, cello song? I think it's Yo-Yo Ma who performs it. screen. Anyway, I heard that and I was like, that's beautiful. I want to play that. So I better learn how to play the cello. And then I ordered a cello <laughs> in when, when we lived in Manhattan and there was no room for it. And I never stopped to think that that song performed by Yo-Yo Ma is a little above my level of someone who doesn't play the cello. So the cello sat in the bedroom for like six months and then I sent it back and probably never played it. But you know what? I was interested in cello for a little while, but I crochet when the inspiration hits. Obviously the plants are a hobby. Um, I make soap, I don't know, sometimes I make soap all the time. I have a bunch still at home. I used to sell it, maybe you guys remember, um, but not so much anymore, but I just make it for us or for gifts for other people. <laughs> and I have like a whole stained glass studio in our basement. The first year we moved in here, I was obsessed with uh, Mackenzie Hall Halley, I think, who makes stained glass videos here on YouTube. I would still watch all her videos, but I was like, I want to make stained glass. So I have like a whole stained glass station downstairs, and I would actually like to play around with that more than I do, but I don't. I might have a couple little things I made from stained glass you guys want to see. I had one really cool piece that I made. It was almost like a it was a 3D like candle holder deal and it was really cool but I gave it to my neighbor I think for her birthday and I thought I would make more of them but I never did but I have a couple of things I don't know why this is turning into show and tell okay these were like on a shelf and I haven't touched them for years so they're all dusty but I don't care enough to clean them right now too early and I haven't had enough coffee But I don't even know. I just got a bunch of like scrap glass. This is supposed to be some sort of succulent or aloe thing. These were like the first things I ever did. So they're not very good. But I made a little tree. These are very dusty. And I made some little mushrooms. I think these are actually kind of cute. I have a light in front of me, and so I can see the light shining through them. I don't know how they look for you, but I made little mushrooms. Then I decided for a while, this is so gross, it's dusty. I wanted to make little monstera leaves. I practiced with a clear glass one. And then my solder game is not strong on this one. Then I was like, I'm gonna make a bunch of stained glass plant things, and I did. But like people make little stained glass, like you can attach these to a little steak. Like people put them in their soil. There's a lot of cute things you can do with stained glass. If you guys are interested in something like that. I am better now than these. These were like some of the first things I ever did and I just found them. But 
let me know if you guys are interested or if you have seen any kind of like cool things like that that I should try to make. Well, now that show and tell's over, I'm gonna have some more coffee and get rid of some yellow leaves. Just kidding, before plant care. I thought I would do more show and tell. I have to send out some Christmas cards. Do you guys do that? I love sending postcards when I travel. I always do. I feel like no one gets mail anymore. That's interesting anyway, it's just bills. Or maybe that's just me. But I love sending postcards and I like sending cards and we should all do that more. But I'm gonna send some cards to my niece and nephew. They live in Oslo in Norway and it's so expensive to send packages. Last year I sent, what did I send? I don't know, I sent like a box of Christmas presents to them that was like nothing of value. It's like less than a hundred dollars worth of stuff. And it costs like $240 to send it over there. And it's so expensive. And they're getting a little bit older now and like, I don't really know what they like or what they want. They probably have everything. So they're getting money this year because it can go in cards and that only takes, costs a couple of dollars to send. So I can't get Norwegian crowns over here. So they're getting US dollars and their mom can exchange them, my sister. So I got these cards that just have a little, oh no, yes they do. They have a little slot. It says place money or gift card here. <laughs> you know what, they don't care about the card anyway. How the heck are you supposed to get money to stay? That's so annoying. This is like, it says place money or gift card here but it's like a slot for a gift card and it's not narrow enough for money. You see that? And I tore it for no reason. Should I put my business card in there? <laughs> anyway, they don't care. They just want the money probably. So I got one for the niece and one for the nephew so they can each get their card. I'll write them off but not later. And then I got one for my, I don't know, maybe my sister. I just saw this and it made me laugh. Butt scented candles. Anyway, so I might send those out to Oslo today. And then I got these, I think I got these in Maine when I was there with my friend Steve last fall. They were like selling all these Christmassy cards and I thought they were cute, but I didn't send them out last year, but. This is a little deer with Christmas ornaments on his antlers. And then this one I liked, it reminded me of Scandinavia. It's polar bear butt and the Northern Lights. And I have a bunch of these, so I'm gonna write some cards out to friends and family today, I think. Do you guys send cards, mail, letters, postcards? Do you guys want a card? I will send a card to the first three people that comment below, only three. I gotta get this video up soon so it can come to you before Christmas. If it doesn't come, I don't make any promises about that, but I will send you one of these. Comment below and I will respond to you. Just know if you comment below, you're gonna have to give me your address. So if you're comfortable with that, comment below. <clears throat> The first three people, let's say four. First four people to comment and make sure you're comfortable giving your address out and I'll send you guys a Christmas card. I also have this one, it's a cardinal. Um, cardinals remind me of my mom and I bought it because I think I thought I was gonna frame it or something. It makes me a little bit sad to look at it. She's gone, she died in 2010 if you didn't know that. But every time I see cardinals, I think of her. Okay, enough cards. On to the plant care. Can we talk about poinsettias? I have a lot of plants, like a lot. I've had plants for like six, seven years, like a ridiculously high number of plants compared to the average person. But I can't for the life of me take care of poinsettias. I've never been able to. Everyone is aware of this. They're really pretty around Christmas. Andrew always likes to get them. And I warn him every year, I can't keep them alive. And I, the same is true this year. He bought like eight, six, eight of these this year. There's uh, these and then some white ones. They always die. They always die. I don't know if I'm overwatering, underwatering. I've 
purposely tried both. Every year we get them and they always die. Overwatering, underwatering, too much light, not enough light. I get plants, I think. I can't, I'm not great at every single plant I've ever bought, but I'm pretty confident in taking care of plants. These things die like almost the second they come into my house. And we still have like five. I've already thrown a couple away. I'm sick of these. I hate them. <sighs> but if you guys have any tips, do they like to be dry? I don't think so. Do they like to be a little more moist? Not this year. They didn't. I have them in all different areas of the house, so they're getting all sorts of different levels of lighting. None of them are happy, except randomly I have one sitting by my fireplace getting like it's the farthest from the light, and I haven't watered it, and it seems happy-ish. No, it doesn't, but it looks better than this one. Oh, I hate these. I'm going to throw them all away today. I have this big global green pothos. I have two of them, and I just have a couple of yellow leaves on this guy. Nothing I'm too worried about. This one is in a place. It's up there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's in that corner. Not really under a grow light, so a couple of these leaves at the top are kind of yellowing. I'm not too bothered. I have um, two of these, and they're growing really long, and I kind of want to combine them. I have a lot of like vining plants, like pothos and philodendron, that are kind of all over the place, and I kind of want to consolidate them. I'm trying to look up ideas of like some sort of setup where I can hang a bunch of them. I actually have this. Maybe I can show you. Or I'll tell you. Maybe I'll put in a picture. I have this idea in my head. I found a big piece of wood. We live in the forest. So I found this big piece of wood. It's probably like eight feet long, maybe, and like three or four inches in diameter. And I kind of want to hang that. And then I bought these hanging lights. I don't know where I have them, but I'll put in a picture of these hanging lights. And I thought about like putting these hanging lights from that, hanging that in here somewhere and then having a bunch of like trailing plants hanging from it. The idea looks cool in my head. I just haven't executed the, the plan yet, but I have too many hanging plants all over and I kind of want to put them all in one place. For now, I'll just put it back where he belongs. So I guess I have good news and bad news. This is what remains of my philodendron spiritus sancti, which I ordered a few weeks ago. I don't know, tissue culture. When did I get it? I was potting it up like outside, so maybe September. Anyway, <sighs> it was doing so well. I had it like under a glass container to keep the humidity up. I have a heat mat over there and it was like acclimating and some of the leaves were dying, which this guy is tissue culture too, and the same thing happened with him, but like some of the smaller leaves were dying, but other ones were growing. And then we have like a weird house, like there's a lot of light switches here, and some of the switches also control outlets, but not all of them, and we're still kind of learning that, even though we've been here for years. And Andrew flipped a switch over there one day, which controls a lamp over there. But it also apparently controls the outlet, which is used for my heat mat. So the heat mat was off for, I don't know how long, and this died. I'm hoping there's some roots growing and that it'll resurrect itself. I mean, it is kind of the season for that, but I don't know. The heat mat's back on, but this was almost $100. It was like 65 plus shipping cheap for Spirit of Sancti these days, but it was an expensive fail. But this is a success story. This is my other tissue culture plant, and he just put out this big leaf. This plant started like the size of this leaf, like it was so tiny. I've had it for a year now, and it's in Lekka, and it's starting to look like a Monstera now. Like each leaf has kind of sized up. This was the most recent and now it's starting to look like a monstera and it looks happy and i have it in this glass container with leka and i can see root growth and isn't it cute like it's a little thai constellation now a tissue culture success and a tissue culture fail 
I just chopped this up and realized that I wasn't recording, which is stupid, but this is my mother of thousands, which this is what's left of it. Um, the mother, I just murdered her. This is what remains of her corpse. Um, I'm not very good at taking care of succulents. I never have been. And I bought this like as an established plant a few months ago, or I don't know how long ago, over the summer. And it was doing fine, and then it was not. And like all the leaves looked like shit. So I just chopped the crap out of it. And now it looks like a little Japanese pagoda. But these are all her babies. She dropped all these babies into the soil, and they seem happy. And you should have seen the before. I wasn't recording, but it looked horrible. And I kind of like how it looks now. So we'll see how her babies do. This is like far too many plants to keep in one pot, but maybe I'll let it grow a little more and then transplant them somewhere. Um, almost all the plants have acclimated really well to being inside for the winter. This one did not, but it looked a lot worse before, so. Anyway. I don't actually have that much more plant care to do in here. Everything looks pretty good, but I wanted to show you guys. This is my Philodendron Dark Lord. I've wanted one of these forever. Uh, I think I saw Kaylee Allen showing one a while ago, and they used to be really expensive. Not that expensive anymore, and I got one of these, and it just shot out this leaf, this new leaf. And I don't know about my lighting in here, but it's so pretty. It's like wine red. The back of all of the let me show you. The back of the all the established leaves are still like a really, really pretty red color, and so are the stems. Um, but then the front of the leaves are green, obviously. But when the new leaves come out, they're just so cool. I love this plant. I just ordered um, a shipment of some more plants that I bought on auction. They should be here on Tuesday or Wednesday, so. I'll try to get this video up like today or tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that video. But I got a philodendron, what is it called? Like Dark Majesty or something? I'll put it below, maybe I'll insert a photo. It's also really dark. I love the dark and the red foliage. They speak to me. <clears throat> so I might do a little unboxing when I get that box, hopefully like soon, because we're leaving in a week. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you that leaf because it's really pretty. Well, it's getting light out. Um, I'm going to do a few things today. I think I want to get a haircut. I didn't want to subject you guys to like morning hair. Hence the hat, but um, I'm going to probably get a haircut today. I'm going to go, I have a friend, sort of a new friend, and we're trying to be like fitness buddies. So I like to run but i don't know what i'm doing in the gym he's the opposite so we're trying to like help each other so we're actually going to do both things today we're going to go to the gym where i basically do whatever he tells me and then we're going to go for a run which is going to be the first time we're running together and he's not <laughs> excited about it. he hates running but he has agreed so we're going to do both of those things um i'm training for a marathon which i'm going to do in newport rhode island in April, I'm super excited. I think it'll be my fifth or sixth full marathon. And um, I have talked a little bit about running in previous videos, but I've been trying to get into the New York City Marathon for like 10 years. It's a lottery and I never get in and I didn't get in again uh, this year. But I did get into the New York City Half Marathon, which is, I don't remember when it is, March maybe? Yeah, middle of March. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so I'm doing the marathon training plan. I think with my new friend, we're just gonna, I'm gonna make him run a 5k today, I think like three miles or so. But I am ramping up my long runs for my marathon training and tomorrow I think I have to run nine miles. I did eight last week, so my weekly long runs are increasing. And it feels good to be running again because I've been out of practice for a long time. So I have to get ready here in a little bit for fitness time, but I think I'm gonna maybe make another coffee, maybe make another granny square first. I need to stop with the granny squares and finish the other one. But I think that's the plan. 
Do you guys, can you see my Christmas tree? We put it up late. We put it up like a week ago. And it looks really good. We're not gonna be here for Christmas, but we got a tree anyway. There's no presents under it. We're not really doing presents this year. We're gonna do more like trips, like spending money on trips. But it's nice to have the tree anyway. Andrew has a huge family, but they're all old enough now that they're not really doing presents either. Except for the little kids, so. Just family time, spending time together. Obviously my family is all in Scandinavia, so I won't be seeing them this year. We'll be doing a Zoom Christmas. But anyway, I'm gonna finish my coffee and make a little granny square, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Look at that, exactly enough by two inches. Amazing, that's so satisfying when things like that happen. Okay, let me tie this off, clean it up, and I'll show you. That was so satisfying. Okay, so I just have to sort of weave in the two or three loose ends I have here, but that's it. I don't know about this color combo, but listen, when you have to make 200 of these, you make all the combos. Okay, I think I'm going to weave these in and then I have to get ready for exercise. Right? What are you going to do today? You'll be a lazy bum? No. I'm jealous. All right, kids, it's dark again. We don't have that many daylight hours in December. Um, I would have liked to have filmed a little bit more today than I had the chance to, but I hope you enjoyed uh, spending at least the morning with me today. Um, as I'm back in the plant room, I'm looking around and there's some projects to be done. So um, if you want to see some more plant care, I actually might like to do a full houseplant tour. Um, so if things like that interest you, make sure you subscribe and like this video. And don't forget, as I talked about this morning, uh, if you would like a Christmas card, make sure that you comment below. Be ready to give your address. And if so, I'll send you a message and uh, I'll also send you a Christmas card. So that's it for today, I guess. And um, yeah, hope you guys are doing well. Until next time, take care, guys.